Uh, Delinquent Nation, Prison Diaries. This is Tawana. Hello. You got a proper interesting story. We was um, speaking. We sp- we've spoken quite a lot. Yeah. You know, um, I saw you did something with the BBC and you got a proper interesting story to tell. And we don't get much girls on. But yeah. Like, yeah, I feel like you've got a lot to say. And a lot of girls, young girls can learn from your story. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, um, so I want to start from the beginning. And that's like, if you can tell me about your upbringing. Yeah. Because I know you wasn't raised over here, innit? No, I was born in Jamaica. And I came here when I was 13. That's just after my dad passed away. He was murdered in America by firearms. And um, my world just crashed when I was 12. Yeah. And I think that was my first trauma that I experienced in my life. Yeah. And then that now led to me moving here. His family took me over. His yeah. sister adopted me, which became my adopted mum. She's oh. really my paternal aunt. Yeah, yeah. yeah so life kind of begin for me in, in England, London, at 13 years. 13. Yeah. But I think you were saying, um, when we were speaking before, yeah, you were saying that um, life was a lot different in Jamaica than it was yeah. over here. Like You said that it was... It was actually better over there. Mm. Yeah, because the usual, well, the scenarios that people are used to yeah. is people come to England for a better life. Yeah. But my one was the opposite. I had the good life in Jamaica. I was yeah. traveling every holidays to Orlando, Florida, having all these, you know, Disney, out, you know, yeah. events, going out with my family. And even though I never had a mom and dad and a stable home, I kind of looked at that as enjoyment. You know, I'm enjoying my childhood. You're not really seeing what you don't have. Because yeah. I didn't live with my dad. He lived in America and I would visit, he would visit. Yeah. You know, and it's when you get older, you realise why you were placed with an older person that was very respected in the community in Jamaica. Yeah. Make sure I went to the best schools, yeah. you know, which is the reason for my education and a certain knowledge that I have. You know, mm. I had a good start. And then when he passed away and I came here, I was kind of expecting the same treatment, which is when you're a child growing up, you you just expect what you've been given all your, all along. Yeah, no, yeah. You just naturally, it's, yeah. it's your, you know, your nature to get what you're used to. Um, do you, would you say that it, it, it really affected you when you, because you, you said your dad was murdered, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think it did. I think that was the biggest point of, you know, losing my dad. He was my world, you know, my hero. Yeah. Um, he did a lot of stuff for me, which now I've got to know myself. I get to appreciate and love, love him more because he was the one that gave my first mixtape. Yeah. I love music, yeah, you know, yeah, I love yeah. music. And he gave me like all my gifts, my first feelers. Yeah. When you're 12 yeah. in Jamaica, you get your first feelers, you're yeah. happy. Yeah. So, you know, he was the one that did that. And all these parcels and clothing and all these toys and stuff and you feel like the luckiest girl alive. So yeah. those were the things that my dad offered me and I just felt really lucky even though I didn't have my mum around because yeah. they were separated and he brought me to his family so I didn't know my mum's side of family. Oh, word. And I still don't really know yeah. the side. But yeah, you roll with it. You come to England, you know, new environment, everything's new. Yeah. But then it just all crushed when yeah. you don't get the, you know, the treatment that you get. You're expected to clean yeah. cook and do all these things and I woke up seeing food on the table growing up in Jamaica and yeah. a lot of people wouldn't know that I don't go around bragging and telling people that because I know that I had ups and downs yeah. so you don't come and be like oh yeah I had a nice life no I just know that I had that so certain things for me was just like okay because I've had it growing up so yeah. I didn't really go crazy over it or anything <laughs> yeah yeah so you, you you didn't really have to do all the the things I would have thought though, as as like a woman, yeah, I'm mm-hmm. not I'm not getting into like all of the what the woman that should expect. Yeah. No, but I come here at thirteen. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so I'm expected young to anyway. be cleaning at thirteen yeah. and doing all these things when you're thinking you're coming to spend time with family, to yeah, have good yeah, times yeah. and just you know go yeah. traveling, go shopping. Yeah. You're, you're like you're being told to do all these things, and yeah. then you're getting shouted at. Shouted at was a big thing for me. Yeah, because you're not used to it. Yeah, I'm not used to it. So even now, I'm as an adult. I find it very insulting to shout at people, you know? I yeah. think respect is yeah, due. Yeah, yeah, but when you're younger, you're, you know, apparently kids, it's normal to get shouted at and yeah. stuff like that, but I weren't used to it. Yeah. So I took that as an offence. So yeah. my trauma was just different. Yeah. Getting moved around, getting shouted at, expected to do these things when yeah. you don't even know how to. Yeah. So when you, so when you come in, uh, um, you stay in with your auntie. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then what, what was going on there? Like, what kind of got you going down the wrong road um I don't think I went down any wrong road I think I was just 
grieving. I was still grieving. Of I don't course, think yeah. I was allowed to grieve. And uh, growing up in Jamaica, people don't really acknowledge your emotional sides. Mm. I can only say Jamaica because I'm from there. I'm yeah. sure from other parts of the world they do yeah. that. But I can only speak for Jamaica. Jamaica yeah. And um, yeah, you're just not allowed to express yourself emotionally. And hence, some kids, they do need that in order mm. for them to progress or to, you know... Mm. Go and find their purpose and just do things what they need to do in life. But I don't think I got that. And yeah, I just think, I just don't think I, I got it. So to me, it was just a big loss. So I kept seeking yeah. for that. Yeah. So then um, I remember you telling me that um, you, you ended up running away. Yeah. That was when, okay. So I moved over here when I was 13, started school, seeing how everything is. I don't and even looking back I don't know why I just had this urge well okay I'm just packing my I'm getting out of here because so I don't know I got brought over here but I didn't think I fit in because of all of what was going on I just think I need to pack my bag because this is I'm not because in my head my dad's gone yeah so I'm just running away to wherever now yeah. <laughs> because you know the people that I've been put in position to take to carry on his job they're just not doing it so I just yeah. wanted to go because yeah. I, I at that point I just wanted to go somewhere where it was more happier than more like you know, all the stuff that yeah. I experienced there. I just think it was um, to be grieving and getting disciplined at the same time. Nobody's not understanding you. Those things can mount up to like pressures. Yeah. And yeah, and I think I really had it a lot because I've been moving around and I didn't realise how much things I, I was going through Word. at the time. Yeah, so I ran away at 15, got brought back because that was a waste yeah. of time. <laughs> 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 got brought back by the police, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, and then you go, you go back and you're thinking, okay, yeah. Was but that your first encounter with the police? I think that was the first one, yeah. And then I saw them as, oh, they're not going to bring me back. You know, I'm just relying on them, but they, they brought me back. And I don't know what happened, really. I went back, but then I planned uh, to run away at next time because it, the condition was still the same. You know, everyone was just quiet, felt awkward, didn't know what conversations to make because I just felt like I had this big personality like there's a lot going on in here that I was in Jamaica, you know, having fun, playing netball, yeah. play basketball in the local community. Yeah. You have your dolls, you're going out. So from that to come in a house and sit down and you expect it to just be in the house all the time. Yeah. Plus it's awkward. I think it's the, all the pressures because nobody's imagine, saying, yeah. nobody has to be like excited all the time or making loud noise, but there's ways that you can make a, um, a, ho a house, a home. Yeah. Yeah, right. there's ways. And I just didn't find anything similar to what I had, yeah. you know, out there. And yeah, 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 it just it just made it worse. So I said, no, I've got to go. So I packed everything this time because the last time I only packed my rack sack. Yeah. <laughs> so this time I packed, um, what did I pack? I packed something bigger, I don't know. Called my uncle that was working for some delivery um, company and he didn't hesitate, you know, my dad's brothers. Like, yeah, yeah they, they don't hesitate when I call them, any little support. He come and he just, he just saw me dropping bags through the window because I lived up on the top floor. Yeah. And um, it was like a, what would you call those flats? Is it like you got the balcony up here and then you got the houses up here and then you got another. Uh, no. Yeah, it was yeah. one of them. Yeah. Basically, my bedroom window was there and I was dashing it down on the floor uh, and he yeah. was picking them up. Uh, and uh, that was the day I never went back because that was everything I packed and I was 16. Yeah. I did my research, found out that you can get your own place. Oh, okay. I didn't get my own place. I went to my gran. Oh, uh, you stayed with your gran after that? Yeah, because I think I was... I don't think I was ready for independence. Mm. I think I was just seeking family love. Of course. Because if I knew better, I would have just gone and got my place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't. So sometimes you drop out the pot and go in the fire. Yeah. And in a way, I'm not really blaming anyone because I think they all teach me a lesson. Just stop expecting certain things from the wrong people. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's it. Word. Word. So from there, mm. what ended up happening, Carl? No, um... Moving to my grandma, I got exposed to a whole different life from what I was used to. Was that in a different area or something? Well, not that far. It's housed then, so it's not that far. So what did you get exposed Somewhere. to? I think I got exposed to, like, just a different lifestyle. Remember, my aunt, she goes to church every Sunday. I don't really do any like any extra activities apart from mm. just getting to church on Sunday and nothing much really. So from that to being going out every day and just go and see who you want to see 
and just all that openness because I don't think I started having boyfriends really early, yeah. which kind of showed how I was brought up because everyone thought I ran away to go have boyfriends and to be bad, yeah. but they never knew that I just wanted to run away to somewhere, you know, where is like a good vibe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a good vibe. That's yeah. all it was. And um, most of my friends I've had, they've given me that. Yeah. So I think I ran away for that. And I think when I turned 19, I had my first boyfriend mm. and it just went off from there, broke up with him and started going out with bad boys. Yeah. So okay, it, it yeah. was really up and down for me, you know, because I went out with a nice boyfriend. My family was against him mm. and it was just like, OK, then. So I was pleasing my family for some strange reason. Yeah. Because I hated them, yeah. but their standards mattered to me, which showed that I was just seeking for their approval. Yeah. So, yeah. And. I, th I think I started smoking weed, drinking, going out all the time. Then I started arguing back to them, cussing yeah. them. And, you know, I remember throwing stuff in the house one time when there was a big argument. You ain't got no blood clot manners. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I heard from the side. I've had an uncle that bad me up. They just, uh, to me, I just got stronger over the years yeah. from all of those experiences. But, you know, I appreciate it because it made me who I am and it taught me how to be like streetwise. Yeah. I yeah. wasn't. I was very like, you know, not knowing what to expect. Innocent. For everyone yeah. was just really good. Everyone, I still think that now, but them times I was naive with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm going to look back and say they all were just people that, you know, I was expecting all these stuff from. Yeah. But when you learn about your family members and your friends and stuff, you realize that the people you ask, you're demanding certain things from, they just didn't have the capacity to give it to you. Yeah, literally. Eh. It sounds like for a lot of the time you was just searching for what you had back in mm. Jamaica and like, yeah. the, like the relationship you had with your dad. I think you were trying to because find that. I believe that was what life was, was yeah. how, how life should be. Naturally as well, because that's how you was raised, isn't it? Yeah. So that's what, do you know what I mean? But then um, obviously you end up getting caught up with big, big charges. Like your, I think you've, had the biggest sentence out of the girls that I've had on really? the podcast. I'm, oh I'm my sure God. you have anyways. And you know what? Before that, because people probably think, oh, is this the first thing you've done? When I was between my, like, 20s, yeah. I was always getting arrested for shoplifting. Oh, yeah. I was out there with friends, like, proper getting brand new clothes and just going to parties yeah, and, yeah, like, yeah. expensive clothing. Yeah. And I liked that. It was a buzz for me. But then I kept getting caught. Yeah. So I was thinking, nah, this, this ain't for me. Because I'm, I'm paying for everything. Like, God, what are you trying to show me? You yeah, know, them yeah, ones, yeah. I'm thinking, every time I go to court, it's the same fine I'm getting. I'm, yeah. So I end up keep paying. So I just got a job after. Yeah. And just said, nah. And you went then, legit. Yeah. And then my friends were like, oh, you're spending so much money. I'm like, yeah. Like, yeah. you know, I got myself back into routine because I don't think it sat with me. Because you can do those things and yeah, it will bring you freeness. But not everybody do it because it's in them to do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I don't think it was in me. Deep down, I just wanted to buy it just to get rid of the nerves. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know? So, yeah. yeah. But I had a whole sheet of shoplifting, 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 yeah. deception. But you, but you did turn it around though, innit? it? Because I remember you saying like, obviously you was working and whatnot, and then you was like, that you even ended up, was it mentoring or, or getting people? Yeah, I was like a key worker for key, men yeah. that yeah, came yeah. from prison. So I would basically help to rehabilitate them back yeah. to the community, key working session, viewing, housing, all of that underneath yeah, one. That was like, would you say that was your path in life? That's what you wanted to do, like help people? And yeah, I find that was, you know why? I think I, I, f I think I started doing care work and then you just start dabble in care work. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And then you just realise that you, you do offer something, like your clients respond to something and then you start thinking, oh, okay. Because if you hear certain things all your life and then you, suddenly someone's saying something different, you're thinking, okay. You try yeah. it. But then I realised that I could connect with my clients and get them to sort of see the best in themselves. You know what I mean? Mm. So it did. I, f I didn't know it fully, but I was trying to go in that field yeah. to try and help people, I think. And, and you were saying as well that you, you know, that's you just wanted someone to believe in you and like to give you the self-esteem and that. And because yeah. your dad used to big you up all the time. Oh, it? All the time. He made me feel like I could do anything. Yeah. And I was at, well, nine, ten. 
because that was my last time when, you know, he'd come and be like, come, just sing this tune, sing this tune, and, you know, things like that. And then I'm thinking, like, in my head, like, how does he know that I can sing, you know? And even when girls, like a group of girls, I remember I went Orlando for yeah. a holiday, and some group of girls, they see how my dad's all, like, treating me and... We're going shopping in the in the shopping center and stuff like that. And they went up to my dad and told him something that was a lie. Like, yeah. I'm an adult now, so I could say if I did it or not. Yeah. They went up to him, but that's when I started. And then my, my dad was like, really, you did that? And then we, we jumped in the car. We drove off and we dropped off the girls back mm. to who, where their mum was. And then I'm, they're thinking I'm getting in trouble because he just said, come, let's get in the car now. So they're thinking that I'm getting in trouble. But my dad actually took me shopping. Yeah. And he said, you see these girls? You may stay away from them. They're yeah. never going to like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, f things, my dad just used to say the, 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 the thing, because he used to say, but some dads would have just believed strangers mm. and young people, but he didn't buy it. Yeah. He knew they were, you know, and that's somebody that's got your, got your back. Got your back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for no reason. I mean, he's my dad. Yeah. But you've got some dads that don't even do the one thing that they're supposed yeah. to do. <laughs> so it, no, it, word though. all that, it, yeah. I got left with those memories. And, and that's a special one because I've never told anyone that. Yeah. So this is exclusive <laughs> that, yeah, you know, the little things that my dad did, that's what I couldn't get over yeah. because nobody was like that. Everybody mm. always wanted to do stuff for their own good yeah. or just and trying to put you down. Yeah. Pensions. So it made him stand up. And yeah. now he's passed on. I'm happy now. I, no more grieving. It's yeah. about making him proud because all the things that he, he thought I could do, I just believe in myself more now. Yeah, that's, that's good, man. Mm. So I know um, that you ended up getting caught up with some serious, serious things eventually. Oh, Lord. Listen. So how, did, how did that come to be? Because this is what you ended up going to jail. How long was you in jail for? I was in jail for four years. It so was a... First, I got sentenced six. Yeah. And then CPS brought me back saying the judge was too lenient. You know, it's conspiracy to possess firearms. Yeah. And that night, it was supposed to leave my house and it didn't. So how did, how did, it, how did it lead up to this? So before we get into that car, yeah. I, like you, you had six, but then they appealed it and then you ended up getting eight, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, but before then, how did it... Um, how did you end up getting involved with having like firearms in your house and then uh, leading up to the even even before before you, even your house got raided or whatever, mm -hmm. but leading up to all of that? What leading up to it? I just think, do you know what it is? I was just dabbling in a lot of drug dealing. That's okay. all it was. It was a money making thing. It was me working and think I got something going on on the side. It it was just I don't know who I thought I was, yeah. but I'd buy my fur coat and I, you know what I'm saying, and yeah. I'll just be. Go into my work back and forth, making sure my kids are sorted out, you mm. know, in my life. You know, back then it was more a lot of clothing and material stuff. You know, I'd swarm them with all that because that's what I've sh I was shown, you know what I mean? Yeah. And not in a bad way. No, but literally, yeah, because your dad used to give you all of that. And you said your dad used to sh sh sell drugs and that back in the days, mm -hmm. didn't it? And I used oh. to just see money, jewelry and... Yeah, I just used to see money like it was nothing. and yeah. So you're I, trying to do that for your kids as well? Yeah, and I, and I adapted the same thing because that's, that's one thing I've seen that I've, I loved. Mm. I've seen other people making money honestly. Mm. And I've seen people, you know, making their way. I grew up around people making honest living. You know, my auntie Gloria, she mm. brought me up from I was five to 13 when I came here. She's yeah. the one that looked after me. She's a respected, like, teacher, mm. you know, for years. And... um that was kind of in my memory as well. But who was I missing? Mm. That's who I mirrored, the yeah. person I was missing, not the person that was present. The yeah. person that was present did their job, but you don't really see it. Yeah. You see the person that you don't have. Yeah. And I think I mirrored my dad because I was missing him so much. Because every time like, you know, I had my kids and met their dad. And, it, and when we, because obviously we had our issues over the years, um, our problems. And every time we had a problem, I would always think if my dad was here, like, why do I have to put up with all this shit with people? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So everything that happened in my life, I would always think if my dad was here, he would know what to do. Yeah. yeah. yeah so I relied on that because I saw nobody else that could, that had my back. I yeah. think that was the main thing yeah. that I feel betrayed by people or family. Yeah. Nobody ever showed me that they had my back. Right. It was always in opposition or being said something negative yeah, yeah. and nobody saw nothing good. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you believe that. And I think that's important as well because... Mm. When, when people are telling you the negative things of your life, yeah, it, mm -hmm. it does lead um, to negative things to, ha to happen. Do you know what I mean? And oh yeah, you like kind of live it then, because yeah. they're they're basically 
preaching it every day and you end up believing it because you are what you believe they yeah. say yeah? Yeah, yeah is that right yeah you are what you believe and if someone's telling you every day oh you're this and you're that whether you want to listen to it or it goes in subconsciously first yeah, word. and you have a choice whether you believe it so your actions now play out everything that people tell you and how people looked at me when I ran away was when I used to see people like my aunt that knew my aunt and everything, they all looked like they had this look like, oh, look at her, you know yeah, what I mean? Judging. And when they all fell out with my aunt, I saw the looks changed mm -hmm. over time when they saw me handling my kids, doing my thing, you yeah, know, yeah. working and all of that. They were like, you know, looking at me different. And I, that's when I started studying people. Yeah. I was like, okay, you guys were all like jumping up when I ran away, like nothing was wrong. Now you guys have an issue with the lady. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, you know, her, you know, her, her church sisters from... The church where she went to, yeah. they'd all push up their faces, thinking they judge you, which is one of my thing about with some Christians, they just discourage people. But that's another story. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, but I yeah, and then it, I, I watched it change over time. It started, okay. you know, like they respected me. I don't know. All right. So um, leading up to the um, thing, then what what was you doing? Like what? So um, so I was working, and basically I wanted to make some extra money. So I basically had the firearms in my house to get money. So someone said to you like, right, I'm gonna, can you hold these? Well, when I asked to make extra money, it would be probably drugs sometimes. Oh. Uh, and yeah. Oh, but, so you had asked a friend or something, can I, like you wanna make yeah, some money? Yeah, like I'll ask my friend, you know, cause I bump into people, you're in the area and you see people all the time. Mm. And do you know what? I, I would go about my business or go somewhere and, you know, conversations and then it'll be like, to be honest with you, how I got into it, I think I think I broke up, not, I had an argument with my kid's dad and then I broke up with him fully. Yeah. But even though I was ready to break up and I did it, he wasn't ready, so, which made it difficult mm. because guys, you know, I'm not judging, but guys, yeah. you don't know what you put women through and then when they're fed up, there's nothing they can do about it. Yeah. We can't go back and unfeel certain yeah, things, yeah. you know what I mean? So... That made the pressure even harder because then I wouldn't take him back and then it made it a bit difficult yeah. to co-parent because, you know, one person doesn't want what the other person doesn't yeah. want. And I just started having friends that would help me make money. Okay. Because it's a mentality thing. Okay, you and your man broke up. I just need to go do my, my thing, make sure my kids are sorted and yeah. I'm sorted. So that's survival for me is yeah. to make money. That's yeah. how my my brain worked. Yeah. I wanted to make money, to put money down, to do things. Yeah. So, and which is funny, I've got siblings, like eight of us, all yeah. of us different mums, and we all are like doing different businesses in different countries. Yeah. It's crazy, yeah. but maybe it's my dad's blood. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's mad. I saw, like I see all my 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 siblings; they're all yeah. doing their own thing. Now, for for um for people, a lot of people in the, might come in the comments now and say like, so. A lot of people might come in the comments now and say, like, rah, like, so you was holding drugs and guns in the yard. Mm -hmm. What about if the kids come across it? Yeah. And stuff like that. And, you know, I know you, I know from when you did your BBC thing, you had some people judging, some people, mm -hmm. whatever. Oh, definitely. Do you know what? From day what one. What would you say to that? Like, Can I say that I judged myself when I first went in? I think that was my first thing, you know, I felt bad. I did felt you used to keep this stuff away from the kids though? Or did, did, was um, there anywhere that was? They were way away from my kids. They were in the loft. Oh yeah. They were nowhere. The only time they came down to be given out is because they were going. Oh yeah. So I can honestly say that it was never near my children, but you can't tell anybody that because they should have never been in the house in the first place. Yeah. And that's mm. my stupid um, mistake. And do you know what? Sometimes we get caught up in the, in, in a way of thinking or a way of life, and you don't think that this is just like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because it start from, you know, you when said you, you didn't think he was even going to get raided. No, I didn't. Yeah. I would never ever think that that was going to happen because I think I'm outsmarting the police. Yeah. I'm just thinking I'm going to work, but they're not going to suspect. And I was fearless like that, yeah. which is if it's just not a good thing when you're not emotionally stable yeah. because to me, I was hurting from loads of things that were happening mm. and I kept bottling it up. And all I was doing was spending money to make myself feel good. Feel good, yeah. But because we do that. Yeah. We spend money when we have a breakup or when we... Some people do it differently. But in my case, I can only speak for me. Maybe there's others like me. I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one. Yeah. You know, 
when I used to go through my problems, money would comfort me. Yeah. Like some literally. people eat, some people do. Yeah, so I make sure I always made my yeah. money. Yeah, I never rely on anyone. I always relied on myself. So if I had an argument with someone or if I'd broken up with someone, it would be like, F you, I don't fucking swear. Yeah, <laughs> no, you nah, can't do it, nah, but I'm just saying, I'm just thinking like, fuck you. Like I can yeah. do my own thing. There's nothing I can't do for myself. So yeah. I've always had that mentality. No, of course. Um, but I think it's an important thing as well because I know there's a lot of girls that, because most girls that really go away, yeah, it is mm -hmm. really for holding things, like, you know, but they but they might have been in the same mentality as you, like, right, mm -hmm. I'm working, I'm legit, I'm not going to get caught, I'm just making a bit extra change, I'm keeping mm -hmm. away from my kids, and da -da 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 -da. but what is it, because I know how mm -hmm. you got bagged in it, like, well, someone was coming to pick up the things, mm -hmm. and then they was getting followed by feds, mm -hmm. innit, so, yeah. yeah. And then they got followed, and obviously what they picked up... They picked up one of the things. Yeah, what they picked up, they the police found on them, which is why they came back to my address. Oh, uh, yeah. So, you know what I mean? If they if that guy picked up both of them, yeah. that was in my house, yeah. then they wouldn't come to find any. Yeah, they but been he came to get one, and there was another one that was supposed to leave. They found it at the top of the wardrobe, because my wardrobe was way up to the roof. Yeah. yeah. So it's that, well, you know you know them high wardrobes, yeah, yeah. and then you've got the, the top bit, yeah. and it was right at the back. Oh. So... He's picked up one of them. Yeah. So the thing is, I should have never had them in my house full stop. And there's no there's no justification for any of it. Yeah. That night, a I lot of people were confused. Just naive a bit. Yeah. yeah, I was a bit naive. And it's not even that. I was so hurt and trusting with these guys. Like, it just, I just thought, like, they're just giving me the loyalty that I wanted to feel. But it's blind loyalty because when you're grieving and you're missing your... Remember, I'm having family problems. Like, there's not a family member that I can call and trust. Yeah. Like, I was literally out there on my own. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when you're feeling like that, sometimes you do make bad decisions. Sometimes you do make shitty decisions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just one of them things. Unfortunately, my kids were in my life. They were not at the house. Yeah. Because some people thought that, oh, it was a big showdown. My kids were there screaming loud. No, oh, it so wasn't. When, when you got raided, the kids wasn't there? Which no, is they were at my their godmother's house, my friend at the time. <laughs> and it was because of my work. I would always have them there. So it's easier for them for schooling. And I would be going there to, you know, help yeah. out and stuff like that. So it was that arrangement. So thank God. And, you know, God had a plan all along. Yeah. And they weren't there the night. It was just me. And then that happened. But for some strange reason... I know it was the biggest mistake of my life and the stupidest thing ever at my kids' expense. But let me tell you that, I found myself and I can love my kids better. Yeah. I can, you know, I can sit down, I find time for them. Probably I wouldn't be doing all these extra things, mm. but I feel the need to do it now because I missed out on so much. Of course, yeah. yeah. And what I didn't have as well, I mixed that up with, you know, trying to give them what I didn't have. So if I, if that's going to happen in my life, going in and all these things, I'm going to make sure that I end it good. Good, yeah. yeah. I believe that, man. Mm. Um, so um, they've raided you, they found mm -hmm. uh, one, was it one? They found one in the house with cocaine in um, cling film. Oh, so in the drawer. Yeah, so they found a, a one, a gun and mm -hmm, cocaine. A revolver and the cocaine. cocaine. Okay. And money. And money. Yeah. All right. So when they've arrested you mm -hmm. and you've gone to the police station, what was your thought process? Because now, you know, I, like, I don't know if you spoke to your solicitor. They probably told you you're looking time. No, nah, not yet. I think no. it's more. Do you know what? Crazy enough, I'm in my head, I'm thinking, are they going to find the other one? I was finding ways in my head yeah. for them not to find it. Yeah. I was thinking, is it possible that they can just go around it and not find it? Because I think it, the realisation was coming that, yep, this is it. They're going to find it. But the extent of it, it didn't reach me yet. Yeah. Because I remember just dabbling in my thoughts, making up stories. What am I going to make to get out of this? Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's dumb looking back. So I'm thinking, like, I should have just been like, you know what? No comment and just end it there. But yeah. the fears, the nerves, the, oh my God, my kids. Because my mind was on them constantly. So of course, yeah. I think I hated myself half the time because that was the easiest thing to do. Mm. was to say like okay I started thinking of all the stuff that was said to me that was negative I'm thinking oh my god they're going to be happy now 
th- yeah, those yeah, things yeah, go yeah, in your head, you yeah. know. I don't know about other people, but when you get arrested or when you hit rock bottom, yeah. you remember the negative things people told yeah. you because you're thinking, yeah, this is what they were you talking about. You start to about. believe it. You yeah. start to believe it because, yeah, they were right. Yeah. You know, you're a no good and this is where you end up. So you go through that stage, but that's the process. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's preparing Word, you. of course. Yeah. It's, pr- it's the process. And I don't think, I, ca- I can't honestly say to you that I can remember fully what I was feeling because I don't think I was feeling properly. I think my processing is very different. It's happening, but I don't fully process it until I, like, what would you do it? I just, I get into it and I search it and, anal- like, I do it yeah. in my head. I don't know how. Maybe it's coping, yeah. a coping way. But it wasn't, like, you know, some people can just react straight away. Yeah. and all. Nah, for me, it was just, like, the nerves. I had to find myself and, you know, I was I went into the, 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 the cell, fell asleep. Yeah. And then I woke up thinking, please let this be a dream. Yeah, like, yeah. just please let this be a dream. And I woke up and I just saw the Crime Stoppers uh, <laughs> above my head. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. call Crime Stoppers yeah, if you've got yeah. information. I'm like, oh, God. Sad. And it's, yeah. And, and I go in an interview. They interviewed me. And I'm, like, trying to make up a story about how the guy got to my house, you know. Mm. Story about, yeah, meeting up. Like, we met somewhere else. This time the guy is 16, so this story would never go far. Yeah. Exactly. I'm thinking blood clot. I'm trying to put myself in another charge. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm there trying to make up a story and then there's me trying to make up a story with a 16 year old because remember, I don't know the guy. Yeah, yeah. So, They're just sending the kid. Yeah, so to, to know from, to so, oh, he's, did you know that he's 16? I said, what? Yeah. <laughs> like thinking, what the hell? So it was making up stories and just not being prepared that this was going to happen yeah. because in my interview, you can tell that I did not expect this to happen. This is the last thing I'd think to happen. Yeah. And yeah, and, and the conversations with friends and stuff, they'd be like, Tona, what the hell? Yeah. Like, you know, it was just like crazy because nobody knew my business. Yeah. Yeah, that's just my hustle. Yeah, word. Yeah. But yeah, that must have been, yeah, that must have been mad. Mm-hmm, very mad. So what? So bam, they're reminding you now, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Remind me. Yeah. And um, hit me praying for bail and all of this trying to get home because yeah. I'm in the problem now so I'm trying to escape it yeah. you know not that's what everyone that. does they're just hanging on to hope hanging on to hope like yeah it's time to get no they're not thinking you got sent there for a reason you're yeah. just thinking you got to get home because you got your kids what, what? you even start te- te- asking God like you know I got my kids not taking accountability yeah. for what you did yeah, yeah, yeah. you know I got my kids God you're not sending me home you know mm. so even that little process for me as well cussing blaming God yeah yeah, it was a mad one because I weren't really going to church. I grew up in a church, but I weren't really going to church like that. Yeah. So it was crazy how, for some reason, I cried out to God and just think, why aren't you sending me home and stuff like that? And then going in, new, seeing all different personalities, see who's begging you some tobacco yeah. when you get your first pack of tobacco. Yeah. You know, you're thinking like, people asking it, you're just like, and then you got people coming, don't give out your tobacco to them. You yeah, know, it just starts yeah, yeah, kicking yeah. off now how people start, are. It's a whole new world, isn't it? A whole new world that like, you got a group coming to you, don't give them, they love to beg, and then they end up begging you. Yeah, the same yeah, person yeah, warning yeah, you ends up yeah. begging you. So yeah. it just started from then. You know, I remember two women, they come past my door, drop two leaflet, asking if I was religious. I said, listen, I'm not religious. Don't believe in God. Can you just leave me alone, please? Like, just yeah. go away. Because they're annoying me because they're like two black women, yeah? And they remind me of church growing up. Oh, yeah. So I'm just angry and I'm pissed off thinking, yeah, you lot think I'm no good anyway. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So you think those mentality of what was said or how you're viewed before yeah. that. So you put it on these two innocent black people yeah. that's just trying to give me two little encouragement, encouragement words yeah. and... They dropped the paper underneath, even though I cussed them. They flinged the paper underneath and walked off. And yeah. it was the next morning, I read the paper and it said, cast your anxieties on him for he cares for you. Amen. And I think that's when the journey began. I read yeah. it and it was like someone lit a match inside. Yeah. Someone just lit a match. God eventually, isn't it? Huh? He ended up finding God eventually. Isn't yeah, it? and I, I don't think he was ever gone. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, but, but, but you know, you know what I mean? yeah, yeah, I know yeah, what you mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, because I would probably say, oh, God found me or whatnot. I think I became aware that I was being carried. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I was being carried a lot. Word. So, like, you know, can you tell, like, because a lot of people don't really know about, you know, female prison. They hear a lot about oh. male prisons, yeah. So, like, what really goes, like, what that, what maybe the outside people, like, do you know anything, what goes on inside what the outside yeah. people, I know there's a lot of, that's what I was thinking. In what aspect? Because remember, you got what's going on there. Then you had my journey separately. Yeah. What people thought my journey was. 
and all yeah. of that. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get into the um, rest of your um, thing because I know you've got a really interesting one, especially in regards to your immigration. Yeah. But, um, Is it what, about the living and. Yeah, the li- um, So, like, you know, are there many. Like, because, you know, in Mel's prisons, there's a lot of contraband. You know, mm-hmm. there's a lot of phones, there's a lot of, like, drugs or whatever come in, that comes inside. That's like, a normal day. Is that normal in female oh, prisons? That, as well? Oh, that's normal. I even see girls. Like they're getting released and they're making plans with the person of how much antidepressants and phones and stuff that they're gonna come back in for Christmas. Uh, These are like proper so they're conversations. Planning to just come back. Yeah, yeah, like you got people saying, you know, I don't even want to go, and all these anxieties. It was people that didn't really have a home. Yeah. And they were always talking about to do this and do that to make money, and they would make the money. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. When I told someone the other day. That a pack of tobacco costs like 80 pounds or 100 pounds. Yeah. They're like, oh, what? I said, yeah, you can make a like a bag in yeah, a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's, you know. That's nuts though. Cause mm. in, in man's pre- like when I, just before I left, a pack of tobacco mm-hmm. was going for 600 pounds. I keep it went up to 800 pounds. What? So yeah. it raised a seat and that, that's what? A couple of years ago, 600, hold on, 600 yeah, pounds. It's a coronavirus, isn't it? So Listen, they add rates because of a meal. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think it's because of the, it's a man thing. Yeah, no, nah, I, nah, I think Because female so, prisons don't sell it for that amount. But do you know what, you, do you know what it is as well, though? Amount. Yeah, I think it's because maybe the security measures are different. Maybe, mm. I, I'm, I don't know what goes on in female prison, but maybe it's less security, but it's maybe a lot harder to get in. For, but especially during coronavirus, there yeah. was no visits, so it was either a screw getting paid or... Mm-hmm. There wasn't no throw over, so yeah. But I spoke to my bridging and he said it went for like a, I think it was like a bag or something like that for a pack of tobacco, like the most expensive one, and like mm-hmm. the phones were going for up to three grand as well. What? Yeah, oh they, my god, it was expensive, man. Nah, I, I didn't know. I yeah, I really was... think that male, like yeah. men in males' prison, they're more frustrated, and this is just me guessing. Don't yeah. quote me on and that. Just, and they just and they just, just like, saying, just okay, I want this much. Six hundred, yeah. yeah? <laughs> <laughs> 800, you know what? I never slept last at that kind of thing. So yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, saying yeah. it might be yeah, why yeah, yeah. they yeah. add a bit more. And you know, it is what it is. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're in this. You you can charge whatever you want. What about um, what about hanging on to relationships in prison? So like some girls come in. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of girls come in and then they, they end up being with girls, yeah. But yeah. I mean, like, what about girls that have relationships outside? Like, say they got a relationship with their boyfriend outside. Like, did they, did they, did the men stay about? Did they wait about, or did they keep it moving, or like, did they get support from their boyfriends? Or? Do you know what? I do see a lot of people get support from their partners. Yeah. Not that it's the ideal support because I do see a lot of people that get support from male that do more damage. Yeah. And have a lot to do with why they're in prison. Yeah. So you got those ones that have these partners that have them in this lifestyle that they can't get out of, but you just think they're just a victim in it in that relationship. Yeah. You've got people that have their proper boyfriend that comes to see them, that supports them, and they still got their girlfriend. Yeah. So that's one scenario. You got some that's got a girlfriend outside and they got another girlfriend inside. Sad, yeah. So there's that scenario. <laughs> and you got the ones where they don't know who they are. They like girls, but they will never admit it in there. They yeah. will prefer to sit down and talk about the ones who's got yeah, a girlfriend. Yeah. For me personally, I had relationships in there. Okay. I was in there for four years. I think on my second or third year, I started having relationships. Mind you, I did. I was I was bisexual before prison. I just never acted on it. And I think going inside and being in a close range of only female, yeah. being the only choice, yeah. I think that's when, you know. Yeah, I think yeah. it's just like something that was just... Yeah. Which is eventually going to happen, isn't it? Yep. And then you just kind of, it's a different world. So, so like, so then I, obviously there's this word pussy politics that mm-hmm. gets thrown about in female prisons. So say someone was, say like you was in a relationship with someone and then, I don't know, or say like you was maybe having a friendly chat with somebody else, yeah. Mm-hmm. Would, would something kick off over that or? Um, or would everyone just I don't know think it, it will kick off because of that. I think things are more kick off. When jealousy and um, things get said, mm. I think that's when things get kick off because the politics is not just sudden. It's yeah. a build up. Oh, word, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It's either that one's messing around with the other one and then over time the person finds out and then this big thing. So or, people would be cheating on people on the same very wing? Oh, yeah. Not cheating, but entertaining because there's, there's this one thing, there's one trait 
that a lot of people inside that have relationships have, they like the to feel like they're making their partner jealous. Oh, and I didn't yeah. understand that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there was always that this 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 feed kind of, of toxic. Yeah, and yeah. it's like they they like when like women are fighting over them, and mm. that's part of their journey because that's yeah. how they cope. Yeah. So I saw that happening, and it's just they feed off that. Literally, yeah. there would be that just you know it's gonna piss off your girlfriend sitting in the chair in the in the canteen, but they do it anyway because yeah, they yeah. want some reaction. So you got that yeah, yeah. as well. So, so that's got, that's the, the politics will yeah, come from that, because the person that's getting entertained ain't gonna back down. Yeah. Whereas if it's a person that's like an aggressor as well, so yeah. that's when arguments will start. Word. All right. Mm. So bam. Um, I know that because this is kind of a head fuck. Mm-hmm. It would be for anyone, man or woman. Yeah. You said that you came back from court with quite a light sentence. You got six years in it, mm-hmm. but or six and a half was it? Um, six and a half, and then I got two years on top. So basically, I did a whole four. Yeah, but I mean, like, you came back from court, like, right, I got six and a half years. Mm -hmm. And then, what, months down the line, they... they... I got sentenced in December, and by January... No, by February, I'll never forget that week when I was all like, yeah, Jesus, come through for me. And I was just dancing and landing. Everyone was like, yeah, man, you're you're so positive to one. That's why Jesus come through. Telling you the knock, you know, I'm telling you the build up. I was all happy. And then I got this letter, CPS bringing you back to court when I showed someone they're like oh my god mm. and it would be like a whole thing again and I'd feel the the embarrassment again yeah. I'd feel the shame again and I'm like did these people trying to just like mm. you know they're trying to finish me yeah. that's how I felt because I'm thinking what because six I, and a half you know yeah and, and, free, and you've already done yeah part of my heart was like breaking again over again and then another one was like god you're giving me this to test me yeah. Like, I just kept here, like, just to test me, innit? Yeah. To make me cuss you now or just to back down. That's yeah. what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying in my head? Am I going to cuss you or back down? But, you know, I didn't. Yeah. I just said, okay, then. I, must have, I just carried on as if I still had the original sentence for a yeah. while. <laughs> mm, so yeah. you got, um, so you got eight. So they brought you back and it ended up giving you eight. Two, so yeah. You, so they yeah. put two on top. So you ended up having to spend which, four years. Which was weird because people on the outside... These newspapers, they're printing that Miss Blake went, um, appealed and got two years on top. Oh. Like, you get six years. I was looking at 12 years and above. Yeah. I got six. There's no way I'm appealing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they assumed that I appealed and get the two years. But no. the CPS appealed. CPS brought me back. I'm not going to go, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. <laughs> upset them when they give me that and I'm happy for it. Yeah. You know? No, of course. Mm. But cool. Um, so you got eight years, yeah? Mm-hmm. I know you went through a whole process with the... um, With the immigration. With the immigration. Do you know what? I think that's what gave me victory with getting the two years because the original sentence of the six years, Home Office only knew of that sentence. So when it was coming to the end, which was a year before, they sent me bail detention, detainer now. I'm just showing you all these documents that got sent and all these officers that get excited because that's the livelihood of their day to get excited when something you know, some bad news comes through for you. So so when I see all these paperwork and they, they, they're confused, they're saying, Miss Blake, you're not getting released this mm. year. So where, where all this? So they went and queried that. I still never saw the cloud, the silver cloud, the silver lining. lining yeah, yeah, the silver lining. I still never saw that, you know? And then when the, when, when, when all the bail detention and everything, it started up that thing again, I'm like what the hell? So I started the process of appealing Mm. Like I just wanted to appeal Writing BL letters and that yeah, yeah I just got mad And just started writing Why I should be with my children yeah. And why I did make the mistake But no one can love them like me And all these yeah, kind of yeah, things yeah. I was writing them You know Telling them like Do you know how much I wanted these children yeah. And things like that And then it got to a point Where I ended up You know Sending in documents I've written to my MP Barry Gardner Big up yourself Big up Barry Listen Barry Gardner <laughs> I'm telling you, you got a good heart because for God to pick you to write my, you know, my my representation, he wrote me a letter from House of Commons. Mm. And that was one of my evidence that I used. You see who God, God asked for the man on top, you know, yeah. House of Commons. He wrote me a letter. He responded. All his team, they all ride for me. They were like sending me emails, telling me what they're doing. Yeah. And it turns out where the letter was helpful, I ended up getting a solicitor through assistance from writing to somebody from the BBC as well. Yeah. So I've written to a lot of important people and they all come through for me, in it? Yeah. And it was very good because I, never, I felt like I never had no one on my side. Yeah. So it was good to 
like God was to me, God was picking the most important people in the country. I was like, who are these people? Yeah. Like George Clooney and his wife, like law firm. Yeah, you know, yeah, I got yeah, the number yeah, for yeah, that. Yeah. And the woman saying to me, just mention my name. Yeah, just tell them it's me. I was yeah. like, okay, yeah. like what's your name again? <laughs> you know, kind of thing. But it was all good, and I think that was helping me. All those little things was helping me. So. God don't just help you like this dash out help. He yeah. helps you like as an individual. Yeah. So if you like things done this way, that's how God's going to help you. Because yeah, well, how I like to be loved, I think he showed me that so I can trust him more. Of course. Because yeah. if I didn't have that, then how would I fight? You know what I mean? Yeah. And it turns out where all those little fighting and ended up having to go court. It, I don't know. It just made the immigration like it made me like focus on winning, yeah. expecting winning more than just thinking, thinking gonna yeah, be, yeah, like I'm going to get sent. So it gave me something to do. I read up all the immigration books in my room. I remember starting a newsletter for all the other people in there because I'm thinking I'm fighting my immigration, but I know how this woman's feeling and she don't know what to do. She's just sitting there crying every day. So I just started a newsletter. All the contacts that was coming in for me, get, yeah. I was just dishing Sharing it in a newsletter. Everyone, so every yeah. issue, I'd make sure I put out the contacts. This is a solicitor. Come on, what are you doing? What are you crying? Come on. Yeah. And just doing letters and stuff for people. And to me, I was helping myself at the same time, but I was learning from these people because there were some people that they were just hurting and they couldn't do nothing. They just seal up in their coat, sitting down, not going out to walk. And I was doing all that. So I was thinking it's all about helping. Yeah. And I just got into helping mode and just relating to other people that was feeling what I was feeling, mums, you know, yeah. mums that were miles away. These are people from like Poland, not in the UK. So yeah. can you imagine how, if I'm feeling like this and my kids are just like two areas that, yeah. you know what I mean? Imagine somebody in another country. So yeah. it kind of pulled out a lot in me. I was writing appeal letters like it was my kids, yeah, you yeah. know, writing yeah. for them and praying for a lot of girls, like to want to become some praying person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's all because of what God was doing for me. I did it for them because I weren't in no church yeah. before coming in. But I just realized that what God was doing for me, I want to push it onto people because yeah. I don't know why he was blessing me so much. But trust me, everything I prayed for, everything I did in my room, he would make it come out just like that. Yeah. And I just wanted someone to have a piece of it. Yeah. So that's how the helping came about. It turns out where I went to court in October 2019. Yeah. November come. December come, everyone's like, Tawani, you don't hear nothing from the court. Like, immigration, you don't hear nothing. And all these talks, yeah. I don't hear nothing. I see January come, I'm thinking, oh my God. Do you know, like... Because your release date's coming up, isn't it? Yeah, my release date's coming up in April. And they can hold you back. And they can hold me or detain me. I'm thinking, do you know what? You know what it got round to? I said, you know what? I can survive. If they deport me to Jamaica, just give them my kids. Yeah. Do you know what? Okay, then. Okay, fine. Deport me. Deport. Just deport me. Just giving my kids. And I'll just... Okay, I could start a job. I could start... I yeah. started thinking of what businesses what in Jamaica, yeah. what I'm going to do, right? And I just made peace with the worst scenario. Something yeah. I remembered from some man was preaching. And it said, just make... Think about the worst scenario and just be okay with that. And then the devil can't use nothing to scare you. Yeah, yeah. So I just became comfortable with, if the worst should happen, I'll be fine. My kids are with me, mm. so I can do anything. And it turns out where January, February come, March come, you know, I'd go to the chaplaincy where they're giving you, getting ready to go home. I don't know, we are making connections. What do you guys have? They have yeah. like a thing, they get you prepared to go in the community. Um, Did that. I think it, NACRO or something like that, but yeah. Basically, they never knew I never had my stay. Mm. So they were doing all that. The, the, coming up to my release date, the woman said to me, Miss Blake, you need to, you know, what's the immigration? What's happening? Because we didn't know and all of yeah. this, like making... I said, I'm going to stay here, actually. Yeah. I'm going to stay in the country with my children. Yeah, yeah. So don't jump to the conclusion. We don't know enough. I'm staying in the country. And you know when I said that to her that day, she looked at me. She was a church woman, retired. Yeah. And she looked at me weird, like she's thinking I'm crazy. Because yeah. I'm saying to her, I'm staying in the country. But I think me telling her that day, because she was trying to tell me that, oh, don't be doing no planning because you don't know. Well, I know my God. Yeah. So I'm letting her know that I'm staying in the country because she made me mad. So I had to come up with it and let her know that I'm declaring it today that I'm staying in the country. Monday from that meeting, it was a Friday I had that meeting. Monday, something told me to ring my solicitor. But then there was a TBN Christian channel in yeah. the association room. Everyone was chilling. Yeah. And then, I'll never forget, Ty Tribet, you look, can look him up, this gospel singer guy, Ty yeah. Tribet from TBN. And you know the song that he was singing on the TV? Yeah. I've already won. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've yeah. already won. And the whole choir just went, I've already won. Yeah. And the next day, I rang my solicitor, and it was like, Tawana, what, what, I've emailed you, what's going on? I've sent you, like, loads of emails. I'm like, I don't know, like, a pandemic. I don't know why they're holding on to yeah. the emails and that. 
And I never got it. He said, we won. You won, Miss Blake. And he yeah, was no. excited because he was a bit doubtful in the beginning yeah. for my case. I said, no, Julian, we've got to do this. Yeah. No, we need to sort this out now. No, I'm not going. So it was that, that for me and him. Yeah, yeah. So when he was like, yes, you know, you know, you won. I was like, you know what? I dropped on my knees. Yeah. And the phone, yeah, I dropped on my knees. I just said, oh my God. And I felt good. Yeah, that's, felt really good. That's amazing, man. So... You won your case, mm -hmm. and then you ended up going home one time yep. after spending four years. Listen, you know what was good? I didn't know how I was coming out of that prison, and I walked out with my stuff, dressed how I pictured it, everything, waiting just to go home to my children. That yeah. was the best feeling ever, because I could have got detained. Yeah. Everything could happen, you know? Uh, quickly, then. Um, what, um, what, what, um advice yeah mm -hmm. quickly what advice would you give to girls like yourself mm -hmm. and um what um what are you doing now well basically um since coming out i've started my online clothing yeah you know my tw fashions you know i love buying all these like stuff to sell to you know i just like when people like dress up you, you dress up you look good you feel yeah. good so i'm all about that so that's you know where the motivation comes from with that and i've started um my mentoring services it's called t inspire yeah mentoring and advice services and it's like an umbrella for a support system for people coming out of prison okay. if you want to get yourself back if you've lost everything inside yeah. And you've believed so much that people are telling you you can't do this. Well, yeah. Tea Inspired Mentoring Services, we're going to let <laughs> remind yeah. you yeah, yeah, that yeah. you can do anything. You know, um, if you've got immigration problem, we've got contacts for you. Yeah. Um, if you're looking for housing, we can point you in the right direction. Um, jobs, we just signed our first contract with um, a company, yeah. a care company, a social care company. So we're getting jobs yeah, yeah. in there. So anyone that's looking for jobs, I'm just waiting for the confirmation now yeah. in writing. You know, they can come through here and help get jobs, part of agency work and that. And yeah. we're still, you know, growing. That's good, man. So yeah. obviously everyone, I'm going to put all the details, all, um, yeah, all the information you. there. So everyone that needs any help, anyone coming out of prison, yeah. go and check that out. And um, quickly, have you got any advice for anyone? Advice? That might be in your situation. What, right? What, being outside? No, that might be in your situation before. Like, you see the situation you was in. Yeah. Do you know what? I, my advice to anyone that's gone inside, don't listen to too much people that's coming in your ears, please. Mm. Try and find things out for yourself. Yeah. Just just go. Just, 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 we don't know enough about our journey yeah. to try and get information from people that's already on the journey as well. Yeah. So go and do your own research for everything. Yeah. Because God deals with you individual. Amen. That's it. All right. Delinquent Nation, Prison Diaries. This is Tawana. We are. Peace. Peace. <laughs>